Sandy Point is one of Rhode Island's many unique habitats. It's the only offshore barrier beach in Rhode Island to offer a resting place for a host of marine and avian migratory species. Nesting seabirds and shorebirds make use of the land as a stopover and to rear young. Horseshoe crabs crawl for miles around to find a mate and spawn on its beaches. Seals use the island as a haul-out. All of these seemingly dissimilar animals share a common bond. They are all in trouble. The safe haven that Sandy Point offers these unique creatures wasn't always safe. Up until recently, an unchecked invasive species threatened to wreak havoc on this fragile ecosystem. Humans. In their quest for recreation, humans were inadvertently transforming this fragile ecosystem into a hostile one. Leftover trash, domestic pets, and the proximity of humans and wild animals all contributed to a decline in island use by these migratory populations. In 2009, the Avalonia Land Conservancy, who holds the island in trust, partnered with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service under the Coastal Program in order to better manage the island by having more of a physical presence, monitoring certain species, and through outreach programs, better educate the public about Sandy Point. The Coastal Program works with our partners to identify, protect, and restore significant habitat for fish and wildlife. We're definitely a unique part of the Fish and Wildlife Service. We don't have any land that we manage. The National Wildlife Refuge System actually manages federal lands. And Coastal Program was designed to actually work outside of the boundary of the National Wildlife Refuge System, work with our partners, and really um, bring our expertise to the table to help our partners manage the wildlife effectively. Um, people might be more familiar with the refuge system where they manage federally owned property. The coastal program is set up to work on partner property to really go in and try to help provide some assistance or expertise where there's a need and to try to find the balance for this wildlife on a more landscape level approach. The Sandy Point project this past summer is really a great example of that. We're working with Avalonia and other partners on this project, helping them strike a balance on the management of wildlife and people. And I feel like we have been able to really make a difference and, and really step up the work and, and see a response from the birds. So that's really exciting and that's what the coastal program was designed to do. The ultimate goal for Sandy Point in partnership with Avalonia would be to continue to have these protected areas for wildlife and then also to have areas for the public to enjoy the island. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. We had some public meetings at the beginning of the year to just get people warmed up to the idea of having this organized management. There was a lot more cooperation this year than last year. I think it's just a matter of education and people just needing to understand why we're doing the things we're doing and understand that we're not trying to take the island away, but strike a balance. <music>
The adult terns take the invasion of these gulls seriously and repeatedly dive bomb and defecate on the gull in an effort to chase it away. The only other thing would be uh, dogs that can be a big pressure for shorebirds. People would come there for walking and the dogs would go into the breeding areas and then these little birds, they flew away and then obviously the seagulls went after them and many were killed in that way. The birds can't distinguish between, you know, your, your, your dog you love so much and a fox or a coyote. It's the same threat to them, just the presence. So those are the two big things, I think, as far as threats to the birds or why they feel so much pressure. But this year is the first year I understand that they've had a wonderful breeding, lots of little ones, so we hope it is making progress, but they're after. This is a, a unique partnership. There's a whole lot of people involved. We have the state conservation agencies. The Stuart B. McKenney National Wildlife Refuge is, is involved. We have the uh, Partners for Fish and Wildlife program that is involved. We have the Coastal Program for Fish and Wildlife Service involved. We've had a lot of support from the uh, branch of law enforcement for refuges involved. For Avalonia, it, it's been a wonderful partnership because prior to this, we were really flying solo, as it were, um, trying to manage, manage the island under the conditions that have been around for a long time. Anne Roberts Pearson, President of Avalonia, has been wonderful in this whole project. She's so involved. She loves to come out herself and really see firsthand how things are going. And all their volunteers have been, have really stepped up this year and they've kind of helped us fill in the holes for when we needed coverage, enforce the rules and just inform people of the new management and why it's important. Yeah. We were very interested in the island because we've lived here for 35 years and been going back and forth to the island in the summer and have noticed the change in the bird population over the last 30 years. Uh, the island was becoming smaller, more and more seagulls uh, were aggressively attacking the smaller birds and we noticed a real decline. So when I read an article about it, the Avalonia Land Trust looking for volunteers to get the interns to the island, I called and offered our dock and the whaler. The organization wanted to find people who would bring over the people to the island and we started that uh, and we have been doing it up till last year when the Fish and Life came involved and they took over from then on. We so. took the intern over twice a week last year and the year before to study the birds at the island. For this particular island this year it was better to work cooperatively and provide resources, provide expertise, and I think that showed that we had a lot of success out here. To educate the public and to really reach out and get community consensus is big, it's, it's huge. And by ourselves, we just, we couldn't get there. We just could not get there. So with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, um, a federal agency, um, this gets people's attention. Um, and once you get their attention, you can, you can try to educate them, and, and, and it's gone from there. And it's, we've had a very, very good reception. Our goal is for the public to have a sense of stewardship and feel really good about Sandy Point Island and the protection that's happening out there and really have a respect for nature and the island. If we can have kids and families out there being able to see the birds nesting and to see the chicks out on that island and then know that great work is happening and they can, they can actually see it firsthand, that is really, really special. And this island was donated to Avalonia to be a nature preserve and I think we're really fulfilling that purpose. I think we had a really successful nesting season. We were able to get out to the island more regularly, which let us protect some more of the nesting habitat. We could really identify where the birds were using early in the season. I think that really helped us give the birds a little bit of space early on to set up nests. The plover population tripled, which is pretty unheard of at any site to have an increase that large. We went from two pairs last year to six pairs this year. We had the same number of American oyster catcher, but we had excellent productivity. And we had a significant increase in lease turns. We went from nine pairs of least turns last year to 443 pairs this year. That's at least triple the entire Rhode Island state population from last year. That was really great to see the birds respond to that sort of
protection. But we were also out more throughout the summer, so we were able to talk to people more and really do more outreach. We really want to find that balance between people and the wildlife. And we were able to show people the wildlife more so they could really see what was being protected and hopefully enjoy the birds out there as well. They are a national resource, they're everybody's birds. We want people to be able to go out um, and respectfully enjoy the island and the birds. I think we had a very successful season finding that balance. I think uh, weighing the numbers over the next few years uh, to, to find that perfect match of maximizing the use of the island for beachgoers as much as we can uh, while maintaining um, optimum bird reproductive rates uh, I think would, would really be, would be our goal. Um, and, and I think, I think we, can, we, can, we can get there if, if we can uh, keep the partnership going and, and I have every expectation that we will. Thank mm -hmm. you.